Hello and welcome to Mariology. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. My friends, if you've been with us through this course, you have seen that we started with the sources revelation, applying that to the revelation about Our Lady as contained in scripture, tradition, and the magisterium. We then spoke about the brief history of Our Lady and the revelation in the Old Testament, the New Testament, the patristic period, a little touch of the medieval period, and then the nature of devotion to Our Lady, uh, the category of hyperdulia. We then spoke about the four Marian dogmas, uh, her motherhood of God, her immaculate conception, her perpetual virginity, and her assumption, body and soul, into heaven, and then her relationship to humanity, a mother to us in the order of grace, inclusive of her three particular maternal functions as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. We spoke about contemporary theological contributions from the great St. John Paul II and St. Maximin Kolbe, and then forms of Marian devotion, the rosary, Marian consecration, the scapular. We then entered the final section of the course, which deals with authentic Marian private revelation, how the, judge, how the church judges uh, reported private revelation, the position of the church regarding uh, the legitimacy of the faithful to accept a reported apparition, before the church intervenes with her final definitive judgment, as long as there is a willingness to be obedient to the final definitive judgment of the church. And so we've spoken about the Marian message to the modern world, anticipated in Guadalupe, uh, and then initiated in this, quote, age of Mary, with the miraculous medal, further developed at Lourdes, the great Fatima apparitions uh, in the first part of the 20th century, our Lady's apparitions in Amsterdam, uh, then going on to the continuation of those apparitions in a certain sense in Akita with two apparitions were, which did receive the approval of the local bishop uh, at, respectively. And now we are going to speak about a reported apparition which has not yet received any uh, approval of Konstat de Supernaturalitate by the local bishop. And we're going to speak about these particular apparitions, known as the apparitions of Garabandal, because they are of the most talked about, discussed, uh, in some cases controverted uh, apparitions uh, in the contemporary discussion regarding Marian private revelation. And in particular, the issue of a reported warning. Uh, a illumination of conscience that would be given to the whole world. Well, for that very reason, because it is one of the most discussed issues in Mariology, it's important that you know the facts, that you are given the accurate information regarding both the church's position and the message phenomena on fruits uh, so that we can, even before the church has made a final definitive decision, as would be the case, with these apparitions of Garibandal, that you can make an assessment, if you so desire, thinking always and, and uh, being obedient to the church's magisterium and incorporating the norms which the church herself uses to make these evaluations. So that being said, let's enter the apparitions of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, reported at Garibandal, Spain from 1961 to 1965. So let's do a brief history of the church's opinion, the status of uh, authenticity or lack thereof, where the church has spoken about the Garibandal apparitions. Well, to summarize briefly, the first bishop who undertook an investigation came up with a, st a statement after a commission uh, evaluation of constat de non, that these are uh, they, they have been established to not be supernatural. Well, there were some later questions concerning irregularities regarding the commission. The most uh, obvious was the claim and, and the confirmed claim that there were hundreds of people who both witnessed what they saw to be the miraculous, but also many, many who experienced physical healings, but none were allowed to testify before the very brief three-day commission. So it was then petitioned to the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith for the possibility of a reopening of the cause. 
a later bishop, Bishop Deval, uh, who was very receptive and at least manifest on a personal level belief in the apparitions, uh, did at least on the official level of reinvestigating, of reopening the cause for Garabandal, which would certainly then constitute the apparitions in a non constat situation. So no, no longer the constat de non uh, uh, status that appeared to be the case with the first bishop. So this non constat, which as you recall means that, that the supernatural character cannot be established at this time, always lends itself for further developments. Well, the non constat position stayed uh, for many years, and then uh, much later, an apostolic administrator uh, at the Diocese of Santander uh, allowed priests to once again pilgrimage to offer mass for the people at the shrine at the parish of Garabandal, San Sebastian de Garabandal. And so this was another indication of the new and, and even developed non constat uh, status, which of course is neither constat de non nor is it constat de. It's that middle category. And this is where these apparitions, these reported apparitions, would probably be classified, properly classified right now in that supernatural character not established, but private pilgrimages can go to Garabandal and again with the permission uh, at that time of the apostolic administrator to offer mass and to nourish the people with the sacraments at Garabandal. Keep in mind that when you do have a constat de non supernatural etate situation where it has been prohibited, then uh, the local bishop does not allow people to visit, does not allow people to spread the alleged message. There is uh, an ending, uh, at least for that period of time, an ending uh, of any a pilgrimage or promulgation of the message. So non constat is significantly uh, different. Uh, we will also see in our next lecture uh, the same status for the Medjugorje apparitions, a non constat, but in that case, as we'll discuss in our next lecture, uh, a new papal representative at Medjugorje. Now, having said that, let's examine the, the criteria that the church herself calls for, message, phenomena, and fruits, to give Father Laurentin's summary of the more extensive criteria that are released from the 1978 called the Seper document. Cardinal Seper was the prefect of the congregation at that time, which now are the norms for evaluation. So Our Lady comes as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. There are a series of initial angelic apparitions to four school-aged children. Twelve, uh, three of the girls are 12, one, of the, one girl is 11. Their names Conchita, uh, Loli, Yashinta, and Maria Cruz. And on July 1st of 1961, St. Michael the Archangel came and said that indeed Our Lady would appear to them on that next day. Now, I want to say too, before we discuss the beginnings of the apparitions, which technically begin on July 2nd, 1961, that one very strong proponent for the authenticity of Garabandal was Padre Pio. Now, Padre Pio would uh, receive the visionaries at Garabandal in San Giovanni Rotondo. It is also reported that Padre Pio himself received a message from Our Lady for the children in Garabandal, uh, a message that Padre Pio wrote down in Italian to encourage the children, but since the children could not read Italian, it had to be translated by the high school uh, language teacher. Now, Padre Pio obviously is not uh, representing the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith or the Magisterium. Uh, I add that as something uh, ancillary, but also significant if we're examining the issue of discernment. Clearly, uh, the respect that Padre Pio, that Saint Pio should now receive would be something in the positive category about his positive discernment of the authenticity of Garabandal. It does not replace 
the proper authority of the bishop. It simply is, I think, a valuable uh, contribution to the issue of discernment of authenticity as the study continues. Now, there are what the children call two formal messages that Our Lady would give to them. Now, formal messages in the sense of messages that were uh, written and, and promulgated as part of the official message of Garibandal. Our Lady, starting with July 2nd of 1961, going all the way to November 13th of 1965, would appear many, many times to the children, almost daily. And there would be extended conversations. The children manifested an extraordinary phenomenon where during the ecstasy, they would sometimes be walking. And it's a very hilly country in Garibandal, uh, and yet the children would not be looking at the path, the very stony path, they would be looking up. In some cases, they were even walking backwards, but never knocking into anything, uh, always being guided. So this again would uh, be something to place in the, in the category of something beyond nature. It, uh, it doesn't prove that it's supernatural, but it certainly gives the indication that this is something beyond the ability of four 12-year-old and one 11-year-old girl. Now, let's get to the first of uh, the two messages. Uh, this is given on October 18th of 1961. This is how the children summarize the message, and I quote, We must make many sacrifices perform much penance, and visit the Blessed Sacrament frequently. But first we must lead good lives. If we do not, a chastisement will befall us. The cup is already filling up, and if we do not change, a very great chastisement will befall us. Now, soon after that first message, there was what was referred to as the miracle of the host. In July, Our Lady revealed to Conchita, the principal of the four young girls in terms of a seer, that she would perform a public Eucharistic miracle. And some three weeks before the miracle, Conchita announced that on uh, July 18th uh, of 1962, at midnight, Our Lady would give her Holy Communion. So, the, understandably, the, the crowd is gathered, and there's a businessman uh, from the town who has a primitive form of early video with, uh, with moving images, and he films some 79 pictures, moving pictures, of the miracle itself, where Conchita simply has her tongue extended, and on the video, uh, all of a sudden, the Eucharist appears, it remains there for several moments while Conchita continues in ecstasy, and then it is consumed. Now, the second message will come closer to the termination of the apparitions. The apparitions would end, once again, on November 13, 1965. This is a message from Our Lady, but conveyed through St. Michael the Archangel. We know from Fatima, for example, how... Uh, how precedented it is that St. Michael would accompany Our Lady in these very important apparitions. This is the message as delivered by St. Michael in, uh, in conveying the message of Our Lady. Quote, as my message of October 18th has not been complied with and has not been made known to the world, I am advising you that this is the last one. Before the cup was filling up, now it is flowing over. Many cardinals, many bishops, and many priests are on the road to perdition and are taking many souls with them. Less and less importance is being given to the Eucharist. You should turn the wrath of God away from yourselves by your efforts. If you ask his forgiveness with sincere hearts, he will pardon you. I, your mother, through the intercession of St. Michael, the archangel, ask you to amend your lives. You are now receiving the last warnings. I love you very much and do not want your condemnation. Pray to us with sincerity and we will grant your requests. 
you should make more sacrifices. Now, it is telling that it was this message, according to certain documented records, that led the first bishop to come to a conclusion, perhaps precipitously, as the commission only had three days and, and did not allow testimony uh, from the hundreds of witnesses who at least desired to offer their testimony. It was this message that uh, uh, evidently had the bishop come to a conclusion of constat de non, under the assumption that Our Lady would never say that uh, cardinals, bishops, and priests are on the way to perdition, on the way to eternal damnation, and leading many people with them. Uh, that's why I think there's such a value to studying the overall Marian message to the modern world, because, for example, you would have, not in the same uh, uh, expression, clearly, uh, but in a similar theme about the division of cardinals versus cardinals, bishops versus bishops, and Satan uh, infiltrating the church, that was a central point in the message of Our Lady at Akita, Japan, on October 13, 1973, as we previously discussed in our lecture on Akita. And so, in a certain sense, that which dissuaded the first local bishop principally, according to reports, against the authenticity, was contained in the message of Akita, which was later read to Cardinal Joseph Rotzinger, the prefect for the, Cardinal, uh, for the Congregation of the Doctrine of Faith, and he gave his approval of the release of the very powerful and very stern message of Akita, once again, present in our last lecture, but in summary, talking about a great chastisement, talking about uh, a new flood, talking about uh, fire falling from the sky, and and wiping out a great portion of humanity. So one could point to a certain consistency of this Garabandal message with certainly what we have in Akita, with various interpretations, also what we have in the Fatima message, which talks about the annihilation of various nations. Uh, you would be hard pressed to find a apparition which has received uh, the approval as being authentic without the inclusion of a conditional global chastisement. Uh, we saw it, for example, also in Amsterdam, and we will see it in the following lecture regarding Medjugorje as well. It's a consistent line of the message of Our Lady to the modern world. Uh, I would also encourage you, if you did not have the opportunity of seeing the last lecture on the message of Akita, to examine what we talked about in terms of norms by which we can, we can understand and evaluate and have a proper Christian response to the message of chastisement. Once again, that chastisements are, first of all, conditional. Think of the ten plagues of the Old Testament. Uh, each plague could have led to the conversion of Pharaoh and the release of Israel, but due to his hardness of heart, he had to lose his own son and the other plagues that hit Egypt. Uh, that could also be uh, allegorical to our present state in that, uh, again, God prefers we receive mercy, but if we do not convert, he allows uh, event, events of chastisement uh, for the sake of conversion. So chastisements are, first of all, conditional. Secondly, they're providential. God uses all to save his children. God uses all to help his children reach their heavenly, hope, uh, heavenly home. And if it's not through the acceptance of mercy first, sometimes the allowance of justice uh, brings man to his knees and returns him to his need for God and his grace. Now, within the context of Garibaldi, there are the four pillars of the message, which obviously follow these two uh, public messages uh, which we mentioned. These, these pillars of Garibaldi are typically referred to as the warning, the miracle, the sign, and then, fourthly, the chastisement. So let's go, first of all, to the warning, uh, called by the visionaries the aviso, uh, the, the, uh, the, again, the warning. It's also referred to as the illumination of conscience. Now, what is the warning according to the description of the Garibandal children? And once again, this is important, and it's a relevant topic because there's much contemporary discussion 
about the possibility of a warning or an illumination of conscience. There are elements of it in the mystical tradition of the church. For example, Blessed Anna Maria Taeji experienced a God-given illumination of conscience, where she saw her life before her, as did, in some form, uh, St. Faustina. So it's not outside of the tradition. Of the tradition. I'd again uh, always encourage a, a careful and a prudential judgment of any alleged apparitions, especially the multiplicity of uh, alleged messages that one can find on the internet today, which oftentimes do not have the, the qualifications and the conditions uh, for authenticity. Nonetheless, the warning is an element of great discussion today. So, as it is contained in the message of Garamandal, the visionaries describe an external event. Uh, Conchita will talk about something like two stars crashing into uh, each other, something on the exterior which then leads to an immediate interior illumination of conscience. That is, that God gives us an examination of our lives, uh, what we have done that is evil, what we have done, what we have failed to do, uh, and that allows for conversion. One thing that's very strong uh, with the uh, reliance, the, the description of the warning with the children of Garabandal is it's for conversion, and it should not be approached first from fear, but first in faith. So, once again, something external that then would give everyone in the world at the same time a God-given examination of conscience which would allow then and encourage conversion, repentance. This is how Yashinta, one of the Garabandal visionaries, describes the warning. She says, and I quote, The warning is something that is first seen in the air everywhere in the world and immediately is transmitted into the interior of our souls. It will last for a very short time, but it will seem a very long time because of its effects within us. It will be for the good of our souls in order to see in ourselves our conscience, the good that we have failed to do and the bad that we have done. Then we will feel a great love towards our heavenly parents and ask forgiveness for all of our offenses. The warning is for us to draw closer to him and to increase our faith. Therefore, one should prepare for that day, but not await it with fear. God does not send things for the sake of fear, but rather with justice and love. He does it for the good of all his children, so they might enjoy eternal happiness and not be lost. So, the first pillar, the warning a God-given illumination of conscience that all of humanity would experience at the same time. Again, starting in some external format and then immediately leading to an internal examination given by God. Secondly, we have at Garabandal what is called the, the miracle. And the miracle, the second component, second pillar, and the sign, which is the third component, are very uh, often discussed together because uh, they will happen contemporaneously. So, what is the miracle? According to the visionaries at Garam Badal, the miracle will happen within the 12 months from the event of the warning. So, whether it be the day after the aviso, the warning, or uh, a year after, somewhere within a year after the warning will be a miracle. What is the miracle? The miracle is a spiritual and physical healing for anyone who is present, visibly present, that is able to, to see and perceive what would happen at the location of the apparitions called the pines. So Garabandal in northwestern Spain uh, in, is in the midst of a beautiful mountain range. Well, within this mountain range are a set of pines set apart, kind of a circular formation of the pines. So, the message is that anyone who is present or who can see what will take place would be the recipient of a physical healing or a spiritual healing. Uh, I, I want to read to you uh, this, the description uh, as it pertains to both the miracle and the sign because what would be seen uh, as part of this miracle 
is a permanent visible sign at the same self same place at the apparition site itself. So once again, for those who are present for the event of the miracle and visibly see the permanent sign on that night on that day uh, when this takes place, these individuals would receive both physical and spiritual healing. This is how it is expressed in Conchita's words. The Blessed Virgin advised me of a great miracle, saying that God our Lord would perform it through her intercession. Just as the chastisement would be very, very great in keeping with the needs of the world, the Blessed Virgin has told me the date of the miracle and what it will consist of. I am supposed to announce it eight days in advance so people will come. The Pope will see it from wherever he is. The sick who are present at the miracle will be cured and the sinners will be converted. It will coincide with an ecclesiastical event in the church and with, this, with the feast of a saint who is a martyr, a martyr of the Eucharist, and will take place at 8.30 on a Thursday evening. It will be visible not only to all those who are in the village, but also to those in the surrounding mountains. It will be a great miracle that Jesus performs for the world. There won't be the slightest doubt that it comes from God and that it is for the good of mankind. There will be no doubt in the mind of anyone who sees this great miracle that it is from our Lord. He will, he will perform it through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin. And now, as we await this great day of the miracle, let us see if the word change, world changes and the chastisement is averted. The sign will remain, excuse me, the sign that will remain will be able to be seen, photographed, and televised, but it will not be able to be touched. It will appear clearly that it is something not of this world, but of God. This is the sign of the miracle. Now, one could respond to details like this, uh, uh, something along the fashion of saying, that's just too specific for me. I don't think Our Lady uh, tends to give uh, secrets or give these uh, indications of things to come. Well, once again, I think that's the benefit of being aware of the overall Marian message to the modern world and of the historical facts that oftentimes Our Lady does speak in secrets. Uh, not only do we have the secrets of Fatima, but St. Bernadette uh, reportedly also received three secrets. And then we have partial revelation for the sake of faith for those who would like to participate. So, for example, she will say that this uh, miracle and corresponding permanent sign, which can be photographed but cannot be touched, uh, will be on a Thursday on the feast of a Eucharistic martyr somewhere in the months of uh, March, April, and May at 8.30 p.m. Now again, without those details, how could someone be present if they did believe in this message and did want to receive the graces of either a physical or a spiritual miracle if one chose to believe in this? without some indications of when it could be, unless they just permanently lived in Garabandal. So at least within the logic and the precedence of the mystical tradition of the church, this is not unusual. It is not uh, outside of that mystical tradition. Once again, warning, miracle, permanent sign, which we'll see uh, has also been uh, prophesied at other contemporary apparition sites, again, as a sign for unbelievers to help people believe. And then, fourthly and finally, the chastisement. Now, we've already spoken about the chastisement, and once again, I encourage you to keep context of the chastisement, that it is conditional, that it is providential, but also to, be, uh, to take, uh, with, with a certain integrity of Our Lady's words, that it should be taken seriously. I mean, all the other events, the, the supernatural, uh, clearly the, 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 the above nature events of Garabandal, the miracles, the healings that have been reported, uh, the children walking in ecstasy, the Eucharistic miracle, all have to be seen as part of the message, which includes the warning, the miracle, the sign, and the chastisement. In other words, I, I think it would be less than uh, full integrity to simply edit out the chastisement because it makes us uncomfortable. Uh, if Our Lady is in fact revealing this, 
Uh, it is something we need to hear. She does so out of love, not out of fear, but because it's important for the human family. Now, regarding the chastisement, I just want to quote from one of the vision, visionaries, this would be Mary Lowley, about a reference of fire. And the reason I mention this is, once again, we have the image of fire with the solar miracle at Fatima, the sun, which is itself a hydrogen bomb, coming down towards the people and then returning to its place in the sky. We have, in Akita, Japan, the reference, the specific reference of fire falling from the sky and a great part of humanity being lost. Here, the visionary, in describing the chastisement, says, it would be worse than having fire on top of us, fire underneath us, fire all around us. He saw people throwing themselves into the sea, but instead of putting the fire out, it seemed to make them burn more. It's a very strong message that cannot be doubted. Once again, I think in, in, in integrity, it has to be seen not only with the other Marian messages that speak about this, but also the context. It's a mother who expressly said, if, if one chooses to believe in the Garibandal apparitions, which the, which the church clearly allows us to during a non constat status, uh, that it be seen along with Our Lady's maternal messages, her expressions of love for us, concern for us, but also the need for humanity to respond. So once again, Garibandal, uh, the element of an internal God-given illumination for conscience, for conversion. A miracle within 12 uh, months from that event of internal grace, uh, a corresponding sign. It's also interesting that uh, Conchita, in an earlier discussion about the timing of the miracle, uh, said it would be uh, contemporaneous with some other ecclesiastical event something like a dogma, were the words of Conchita, once again to be seen in its full perspective, and ultimately a conditional chastisement. And again, we take this all as one Marian message of the modern world calling for personal examination, calling for the possibility of more generosity in terms of prayer and penance and fasting, and all that Our Lady asks, uh, ultimately seeking the peace that she promises at Fatima, the great Triumph promise in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. A period of peace will be granted to the world. Well, thank you so much for being with us during this lecture of Mariology. This is Dr. Mark Mervalli wishing you all God's blessing and that in a special way and a renewed way daily, we will receive the gift of the crucified Jesus from his sacred heart to our hearts, the gift of his mother in the words, Behold your mother. God bless you all.